Today we're going to be talking about the Bohr model of the atom. Throughout time, there have been many theories that have been proposed about the structure of an atom, and Bohr is one of them who proposed the model that is not used today, but had um, a lot of significant impacts on the way we see an atom. So, the Bohr model holds true for hydrogen, but for none of the other elements. Bohr proposed the new model after Rutherford's model, and basically Rutherford's model said that protons and neutrons were in the nucleus, which Bohr agrees with, but Rutherford believed that atoms were just circling all over the nucleus, but Bohr had a new theory. So, in order, the, Bohr came up with this model because he needed to explain how atoms change energy when they absorb or emit light. So what he came up with were that there were circular paths around the nucleus that electrons were on. So they couldn't just be anywhere, they couldn't be circling all over like planets, they had to be in specific orbits around the nucleus. So each orbit is a different energy level that the electron can be on, but it has to have that same energy as the energy level to be at that energy level. So each energy level can only be filled with a certain amount of electrons, and once that's filled, it can go on to the next energy level. So we only need to know the basics, because this is something we should have learned in the past. But so our first level, which could be called N1, contains only two electrons. The next level, N2, can, can have up to eight electrons. Third level, N3, can also have up to eight electrons. And the fourth level, N4, can have up to 18 electrons. So this is probably a picture that you've seen in the past. You have your nucleus in the middle, which has your protons and your neutrons, but since your protons are in it, that's why there's a positive. You draw your paths around it, and you start filling from the inside out. So you would do two electrons, and start filling all around until you got to the element that you were looking for. So let's try a sample problem together, and then you can do one on your own. Fill in the Bohr model with the correct amount of electrons for oxygen. So if you look at oxygen on our periodic table, we can see that it has an atomic number of eight. So that tells us that there are eight electrons since it's a neutral atom. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our Bohr model. Start with our nucleus. And let's draw some orbits or energy levels. So it has eight electrons. So we're going to start on our first level. That's two. And we need to start filling in our outside one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this would be the Bohr model for oxygen. It has eight electrons filling in from the inside out. Alright, so now you're going to try this one on your own. Fill in the Bohr model with the correct amount of electrons for sodium. Hopefully you got the same diagram as I did. If you didn't, look over it again, and if you still don't understand it, we can go over it tomorrow.